Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 17 and in this video we will explore the concept of AWS Lambda. So AWS Lambda is again one of the very important services that you need to learn as a DevOps engineer. The reason for this is on a day to day basis there are multiple use cases of Lambda functions for DevOps engineers. You use Lambda functions for projects such as cloud cost optimization as a DevOps engineer. It's one of your primary responsibility. So you can use Lambda functions for cost optimization and you can trigger Lambda functions with wide range of services such as S3, CloudWatch. You can use a lot of services and perform activities which are basically called as event driven actions. Now, don't worry about all of these keywords that I'm using. I'll explain each and everything that we are talking here. And by the end of today and tomorrow's video, that means we'll take two videos for Lambda functions. And by the end of these two videos, we will master Lambda functions from the point of view of DevOps engineer. So Lambda functions has wide range of use cases. Developers also use Lambda functions with respect to serverless architecture, serverless application development. But what we will try to do is we will try to learn how DevOps engineers makes use of Lambda functions. So today's video will be focused on the fundamentals. You will understand what is the serverless architecture. You will understand the difference between EC2 and Lambda functions. When should you use EC2? When should you use Lambda functions? This is very, very important because as DevOps engineer, you have both the choices, right? You can use EC2 instances, you can use Lambda functions. So when will you use? Which service is cost efficient? I'll provide you all of these details in today's fundamentals. And then we will move on to try to understand, okay, we will go to the AWS dashboard. We will see what are the different features of Lambda functions. We will try to explore how to write a Lambda function on the AWS UI. And we will also expose this to outside world and very simple application we will execute and understand how Lambda workflow works. But in tomorrow's video, we will do practical demonstration regarding the cost optimization. That means I'll show you in real life how DevOps engineers use the combination of CloudWatch with Lambda functions and can help their organizations reduce the cost. But to understand this demo, you should definitely watch today's video because without this, without the foundational knowledge on AWS Lambda or the serverless architecture, it is not possible to understand tomorrow's video. So watch the video till the end and I hope you will also perform the simple demo that I'm going to do at the end along with me. Okay, so first things first, first of all, let's try to understand this entire concept of Lambda. Like, you know, when we say Lambda, the first thing that you need to understand is what problem is it solving on AWS? So whenever we discuss about a service, we always talk about the problem that service is solving, right? When we talk about S3 bucket, right? For example, when I say S3, the thing that immediately comes to your mind is storage because AWS is solving the storage problem with S3. Similarly, when Lambda comes to your mind, there are two things. That one thing is compute and the other thing is serverless. So Lambda functions belong to the compute family, but it solves the problem of serverless. So it has two primary characteristics. So it belongs to the same family that EC2 belongs to. So EC2 is again one of the service that we discussed on day three, and it was also solving the problem of compute, right? So previously when you are on your on-premises instances, right? When you were working on the data centers or when applications were on the data centers, so people used to create their own servers and people used to work on it. When people move to AWS, then there is an offering from AWS, which is called as EC2. And what it does, basically, you have to provide a bunch of parameters to it. What kind of image you want, what kind of instance type, which is basically memory requirements, CPU requirements. And if there is any security related stuff, once you provide all of these things, AWS will give you a EC2 instance, which is nothing but a virtual compute. Or you can call it as a virtual server. Right. So this is what EC2 is doing. Now, Lambda function also does something similar. So Lambda functions can also 
give you compute if you have an application let's say you have a python based application you can run this python based application on this compute that belongs to lambda but the primary difference between using ec2 and using lambda functions is that lambda functions follow the serverless architecture that means if you are spinning up a lambda function like you can go to the aws console and create a lambda function which i'll show you what would happen is that you will not provide all of these details to aws so aws will automatically take care of the server depending upon the application that you are running let's say you say that you want uh, to run a python application you want to run a node js application or you want to run uh, any kind of application then what aws does is aws will automatically create a compute for you right depending upon your requirements and once your entire application is run let's say your application is triggered you wrote an application for calculator function for example okay so when your application is running what aws does is it will create this entire compute for you and once your application is done let's say user try to perform 2 plus 3 for addition functionality of calculator once this function is done what aws does is aws will tear down the compute whereas that is not case with ec2 right so ec2 you have to take care of tearing down the instance so you can create this instance you can provide all the requirements for the instance and once your job is done you will tear down this instance whereas in the serverless architecture you are not responsible for the server at all right even in ec2 you don't manage you don't uh, create security upgrades for your ec2 instances or aws does some kind of managing right even aws take care of managing for your ec2 instances it reduces a lot of effort for you you don't have to bother a lot but when you compare with lambda functions in terms of lambda functions you don't even have to tell aws that okay i want uh, 8 cpu i want uh, 16 gb ram or you know you don't have to tell uh, aws that okay these are my requirements aws can automatically right it can automatically create a compute instance for you depending upon your application if your application requires more amount of compute than it created it will automatically scale up and once your application is done so once the task is done it will automatically scale down let me give you one basic example that we use on a day to day basis so that you will understand the concept of lambda functions so let's say there is a platform called food delivery platform okay so let's assume that there is a food delivery platform and it can be a mobile application or it can be a desktop application but there is a food delivery platform and this food delivery platform when a user creates a request so let's say user has created a request for uh, he wants xyz food so he goes to the check in he, uh, sorry he goes to the checkout he he performs the payments and once his transaction is done then he will simply move out of the application and his food order is placed right so if you are using lambda function for this specific activity like the checkout form and uh, the payments and all the things what happens is depending when a user sends a request only then aws creates the infrastructure for running this application for running the payments application once payments is done transaction is done this user's performance or this user's job is done right now this user do not want to go to the payment application one more time so his job is to make a payment and place the order once this is done aws will tear down the infrastructure that it created for the payments application right so if you use serverless architecture this is the advantage so ec2 instance is basically pay as you use but you have to take care of using you have to take care of scaling up scaling down when you don't require ec2 instance you have to manually go there and you have to tear down the instance but here everything happens automatically that's why this architecture is called as serverless there is no server you don't have to take care of servers once the requirement is there aws will create that server for you once the requirement is done aws will tear down that server for you right so this is primary advantage of serverless but if you compare it with ec2 instance if you create an ec2 instance for example so you will get an ip address right whether it's a public ip address private ip address anything whereas in terms of lambda functions 
you don't get anything related to IP address or you know, you will not even know where this instance is created. Where is it hosted? Okay. Is it uh, created with auto scaling enabled or not? Of course, it is created with auto scaling enabled, but you cannot see all of these details for the Lambda function. Whereas if you're talking about the EC2 instance, you are the complete owner of all of these details. You can control uh, the public IP address uh, subnet range. You can control, uh, you know, if auto scaling has to be enabled or disabled, right? And uh, you can do a lot of other things that I've shown on day three. So you should definitely watch day three if you want to understand more about EC2 instances, right? So these are the primary differences between Lambda functions and EC2, which is nothing but serverless and server architecture. So who will decide this? Who will decide that should they go with the server approach or should they go with the serverless approach? So as a DevOps engineer, you will not decide if the application that you are working on or if the project that you are working on should go with the server approach or should go with the serverless approach. So this will be taken care by the development team, the architecture team, the design team. They will decide if you want to go with the server approach or if you want to go with the serverless approach because it depends a lot on the application that is written and if that application is written in the serverless approach or not. Right? So a food delivery platform, for example, a food delivery platform can run on the server architecture and it can also run on the serverless architecture. So how this application is written by the developers, how this application is designed by the architecture team is the one that drives the factor of going with server architecture or going with the serverless architecture. As a DevOps engineer, your responsibility is when someone tells you to create this Lambda function, when someone tells you to create the infrastructure, then you have to take care of it or you have to use Lambda function on your activities, right? For example, like I told you, you can make use of Lambda functions for cost optimization, right? And in that case, when you are doing these kind of things like cost optimization, why will you not go with EC2 instance and why will you go with Lambda functions only, right? This should be your question. Like Abhishek, you have been talking about a project called cost optimization, right? So you said that as DevOps engineers, we will do something called as cost optimization where we will take a look at all the AWS resources uh, that are there on the uh, platform. We will see if there are any stale resources. We will either delete them, right? Or send some notifications. For example, there is uh, a developer who has created a EBS volume. This EBS volume was created 30 days ago and no one is using it, right? So as a DevOps engineer, your responsibility is either go and delete this uh, EBS volume or send out notification saying that, hey, developer, you have created a EBS volume 30 days ago and it is costing the organization and no one is using it, right? So this way you can perform and This is a very basic example. So you can perform such activity on all the AWS services. Let's say your organization is using 20 AWS uh, services. Then you can write this code in Lambda functions to control the resource usage, not control the resource usage, but to govern the resource usage. Govern is basically like monitor and report. Using Lambda functions, you can take a look at all the AWS resources that your organization is using and you can report back saying that, hey, uh, I wrote a script as a DevOps engineer and what I noticed is someone has created an EC2 instance almost a year ago Nobody is using it, but the instance is still running with a static IP address. That is instance is still running with elastic IP address and you will be costed for the elastic IP and you will be costed for the EC2 instance as well. So I'd recommend you to delete it. And who shared this information? The script that you have written has shared this information. Now tell me you will run this script. Let's say you have written 10 Python scripts for this activity. Okay. Or you have written 10 Lambda functions for this activity. And this activity you will run, let's say every day at 10 a.m. in the morning. Okay. So you will run this script every day at 10 a.m. in the morning. So you would definitely prefer to use Lambda functions or you would definitely prefer to use serverless architecture over the traditional EC2 instance because 
if you use an ec2 instance every day morning 10 am you have to go and create an ec2 instance if this script runs for 5 minutes then after 5 minutes you have to delete that ec2 instance right whereas if you are going with the serverless architecture what is the advantage so you just have to tell aws cloudwatch that every day at 10 am trigger this lambda function why you have to tell cloudwatch to trigger the lambda function because this lambda functions or in general the serverless uh, solution on aws using lambda function is only event driven that means it has to be driven by the event it cannot run by itself manually see i mean that's a best practice that's a better practice to trigger the lambda functions using an event so that's why what you do is every day at 10 am you can just configure a, a cron job or something in the uh, cloudwatch and tell cloudwatch to trigger the lambda function and it will perform the activity it will create the compute or it will create the server by itself it will run your 10 python scripts and once your python scripts are done AWS Lambda will automatically tear down this instance and your cost, you don't have to bother about it, right? Because it is automatically created and it is automatically tear down. Whereas in this case, you have to either write a Python script or again, you have to write a shell script or you have to write a CLI script to create an instance, tear down instance. If in some case, you know, you forget it, then you will be affected with the cost. So when required, you have to go with the serverless architecture. And some of the best use cases of serverless architecture as a DevOps engineer is that the classic one that I just mentioned, cost optimization, which is primary responsibility of DevOps and cloud engineer, right? Because once you move to cloud, everyone wants to go and see what is their cost. How did they optimize the cost? Did it increase or did it reduce? Then you can also take care of security. Or in other words, I can say you can also take care of compliance. How can you take care of compliance or security using the serverless or Lambda functions as a DevOps engineer is that let's say your organization has decided that nobody will create a EBS volume of type GP2. So in EBS volume, there are basically two types, which is GP2 and GP3. So if your organization says that, hey, nobody should use GP2 because GP2 has some security issues. What if one of the developer goes ahead and creates GP2? So you can automate this behavior or you can write a Lambda function. Say that this Lambda function has to run it every day at 10 a.m. to verify if there are any GP2 based EBS volumes on the AWS account. If there is any GP2 based EBS volume, you can trigger a notification. Again, you can use SNS service there. You can trigger this notification and you can send the notification to your management or the person who has created this EBS volume to immediately delete that because it's against the compliance of your organization. Or you can basically say that someone has created a S3 bucket with public access. Even these kind of things you can monitor using Lambda function. So the scope is endless. What you can do with Lambda functions is endless. So as a DevOps engineer, you have to innovate. You have to make full use of Lambda functions. Depending upon your organization, you can come up with your own solutions and you can improve cost optimization. You can improve the security of your organization. And additionally, you can also perform some things like, you know, some regular routine activities. So as a DevOps engineer, probably you want to check every day on the IAM users that are available. Okay, if someone has created uh, any additional permissions to the IAM users or IAM roles. So, like I told you, the possibility of things that you can do is endless. But the primary things that every organization would look for is cost optimization and security. So, you can do these things with Lambda or serverless architecture. And I will show you both the demos. So, this demo, for example, if we take the security or compliance, I have already created the EBS GP2 to GP3 uh, that is already available on my channel. I'll put the link in the description. So you can uh, take a look at the link and you will understand, okay, how you will convert or you can uh, report, send out a notification using Lambda functions that someone has created GP2, please change it to GP3. The demo is already there. I'll put the link in the description, but tomorrow's video, I'll focus on the cost optimization because one demo is done. 
I'll focus on the demo two. And this one is very, very important. If you join as a cloud or DevOps engineer in any organization, you will definitely focus on the cost optimization part because it will be primary goals or it will be one of the most required things for organizations, right? So this is a brief introduction of Lambda functions. And now I'll quickly share my screen and show you how to use this Lambda function. It's very, very simple. The UI based thing is like you can just learn the UI in five to 10 minutes. So I'll create a very dummy sample application and we'll try to access this application. I'll show you like similar to EC2 instance, how you access the application from outside world. I'll show you that. But as a DevOps engineer, the accessing the application from outside or writing a Python uh, serverless application might not help you much because your goal is to write some scripts to automate or to provide security for your organization, but still better to go and look at the demo and understand how Lambda functions are used even in this specific case. So let me share my screen. Okay, so also if you have an interview and if you want to quickly go through the things that I've mentioned, if in interview someone asks you what is serverless or why do you use Lambda functions, you can also use this GitHub page. So I think People who are following these videos, they already know the GitHub location. If you don't know, you can uh, go through the description and I have provided the real life use cases, what is serverless, all of the things that we have discussed even on this GitHub page. So follow the GitHub repository to get updates every day. Now let's go to this uh, AWS page. So I've logged into my AWS account and all that you need to do is go ahead and search for Lambda. So you will go to this page called uh, Lambda or Lambda functions. Click on create a function. Okay. So the user interface is pretty simple. All that you need to do is do you want to write code from the scratch? So let's say you want to start writing your program directly here, or do you want to use any samples that are provided by AWS? So this will help uh, developers as well as uh, DevOps engineers. So let's say you are a developer. This samples also provides you example to create a microservice that interacts with DDB table. As a DevOps engineer, you might not need this, but if you scroll down, you have some examples like uh, trigger the Lambda functions when an object is created in S3 bucket. It's a valid use case, right? Let's say you have uh, a S3 bucket and uh, you want to get notified whenever an object is created inside it, you can integrate S3 buckets with Lambda functions. Similarly, there are multiple options here. And the other thing is you can also write code in your personal laptop instead of writing it here. You can also write code on your personal laptop and you can create an image out of the code that you have written, right? So you can create a Docker image out of the code that you have written and you can use the image here, but you have to push the image to the ECR. But again, these things are not that much required uh, as a DevOps engineer. You can uh, focus on creating from scratch, you can use your Visual Studio or something. You can write it local and you can upload zip file as well in this option. I'll show you in a while. So let's say test. Let's change this to Python. And Lambda functions can be written only in this programming languages that are available here. Let's say you don't know any of the programming language that is mentioned here, then you cannot write Lambda functions. So it supports Go, it supports Java, it supports Python and Ruby primarily of course node.js but let's say you want to write it in shell scripting or something it's not possible so as a devops engineer you can only write in this possible options that's why i say that uh, python is also one of the useful programming languages as devops engineer click on the advanced settings and you have an option here called enable function url when you enable this one then you will get a public IP address or you will get a IP address to access the application that you have written in the Lambda functions. If you don't enable this, you cannot access it from outside. You can still run the program inside the AWS environment. Who wants to access this? People with IAM access or anyone. For now, just say anyone can access it because you are just doing a demo. And now what you will do is basically click on create function. Uh, sorry, I think, yeah, it's getting created. Just a second, I think, yep. So it is created. And if you watch it carefully, so this is the function and there are two options to it, right? 
one is what is the trigger to this function and what is the destination to this function of course destination and trigger are not mandatory but a trigger is used most of the times what is a trigger i told you that lambda functions or this serverless are basically event driven functions right what does that mean this is an event driven function that means they are triggered by a specific event that event can be a cloudwatch event basically you can tell cloudwatch to trigger every day at a specific time or it can be a api event on the cloudwatch you can tell cloudwatch that okay whenever a ebs volume is created trigger the lambda function or it can be trigger from s3 s3 also has something called as event triggering so you can also trigger from s3 buckets or some other services that support triggering on aws without a trigger you have to manually run the lambda functions and that will kill the purpose of creating the serverless application as a devops engineer of course you know you can uh, create a lambda function and by yourself you can run it every day at a specific time or you can run it whenever you require but if you configure this lambda functions with some events then it will be more efficient solution right so here there is already an example of a python function uh, basically what it is doing is when you run this python function it will return hello from lambda functions on the browser right so you can just change it say that uh, hello from aws 0 to hero series right so i am not tweaking a lot of things in tomorrow in today's video because tomorrow's video we will anyways write the lambda function for cost optimization program uh, whenever we are doing day 18 you will see that but right now i am focusing on explaining you the structure of this lambda functions so what exactly is happening here is you can write any python code here but you have to make sure that the name of the function is lambda handler right so why you have to make sure this is lambda handler can you change it definitely you can change it but if you are not changing anything like uh, in the configuration i'll show you in a minute but let's say you are not changing the configuration this name has to be the same thing you can write multiple again like you know you can write more functions you can write function uh, definition abhishek right but this definitions will not be called automatically this definition has to be triggered from the lambda handler right so here you have to probably mention like you know abhishek and you have to invoke this function okay so the first function usually let's say you are a java developer or something you have a main function right so similarly in terms of this serverless architecture of aws lambda handler is the function that this serverless architecture calls right so if your cloud watch is triggering the lambda function they if you have 10 functions here AWS has to know which function has to be called, right? So that first function that get calls is the Lambda handler. Now you can change this name. Of course, you can go to the configurations. Uh, I'll show you in a second. You can go to the configuration and you can edit the name of the function, right? Once you edit the name of the function, you can provide uh, any name and you can modify it accordingly. But if you are not changing the name, like I'm repeating it again, if you are not changing the name here, then it has to be lambda handler only okay perfect now uh, this is how you write a function just like python function only but uh, there is not much difference if you have requirements.txt you can keep adding files here like if you click on the button here you can add n number of files you can click on new file you can add a file you can click on new folder and you can add folder let's say you are not comfortable with this uh, terminal you don't want to write your code here then no problem you can write your code anywhere and you can upload the content here you can upload from a zip file so what you will do as a developer you can write your code in the uh, visual studio code and you can upload the zip file here if you upload the zip file it gets populated here and you can view this as an editor right now how do you control this lambda function right so basically let's say you want to pass some uh, arguments to this or you know uh, in future you don't want to make modifications to the code usually what you do if you are writing this uh, python code on your laptop you make use of environment variables right similarly even lambda function supports environment variables so you can tweak the environment variables uh, if you go here sorry uh, you have option for the configurations right here you can provide uh, environment variables uh, just a second i lost it yeah 
sorry it's here so you can provide environment variables click on the edit button and you can add the environment variables so whenever this function gets called or on your on the compute that ec2 is creating whenever this function gets called you can tweak that values from the environment variables so tomorrow you can just come here modify the environment variable so that you don't have to touch the code again right so this is about uh, environment variables how to use it and apart from that if you go to configuration you will find a lot of options such as triggers i just explained what kind of trigger you want then you have permissions who wants to access this uh, specific lambda function so by default when you create a lambda function a role gets created for you okay so aws automatically creates a role for you let's say you don't want to use that role that aws is creating so during the creation of function right so let's say i'll create a new lambda function click on create function just call it as a uh, test one for example okay whatever it is uh, let me keep that so here you have changed default execution role you can use an existing role now why this is important because if you have your uh, own role where you know all the permissions that are required to run the application then yes you can come here click on create existing role if you have anything and you can assign that role again i'm repeating whenever you are using a service in aws if that service has to access other services for example if this lambda function has to talk to sns this lambda function has to talk to uh, let's say s3 bucket for some reason for getting some information then that role plays a critical role right if you are not creating a role still it's fine you can just use the role that uh, aws has created for you and you can go to that role and you can increase the permissions right you can escalate the permissions so it will just redirect you to the im console and you can redirect the permissions there as well just like we did in the previous videos add permissions and attach the permissions but the key thing to understand is you can play with it you can increase the permissions or you can use any existing role that you have destinations like uh, let's say this lambda function uh, has a destination called sns or this lambda function wants to uh, put some information or you know you want to send out some uh, output for your lambda function then you can configure a destination service as well function url you just saw when i create when i enable the http access so this is my function url i can make use of this url and i can access the application right now when i use this what would happen if i click on this button it will give me the output called hello from lambda let me increase the font so why did it give the output called hello from lambda because that's the function that we have written let's say this is not available i did not enable uh, the http access to this uh, lambda function then it cannot be accessed from outside but still any internal service can call it and lambda function can perform the required activity this might not be that helpful for devops engineers because mostly we use lambda functions for the activities that i defined and in that activities you don't need external activity external access to the function mostly developers if they are developing the applications in the serverless architecture then for them these kind of things are important you can create this within a specific vpc right so if you want to create uh, this lambda function within a specific vpc then you can also put that so that uh, it is restricted only it can access the service within the vpc only the uh, services within the vpc can also access the lambda functions so you can also do that then again there are few other options for asynchronous in invocation concurrency uh, database proxies so these things are not that important from the devops engineer point of view and specifically in this course that we are doing uh, i don't think it makes sense to cover it because we are focusing on the job opportunities for devops engineers so we will focus on real time use cases of devops engineers we will not focus on the edge cases but we will focus on the scenarios that are most widely used within a company by devops engineers so stay tuned for tomorrow's project or whenever the day 18 is getting released so this is about day 17 where i wanted to explain you about the server serverless architecture lambda functions difference between ec2 instance and just to give you a feel of how this lambda functions would look like and uh, you can also do this very basic demo just run the lambda uh, function so that you will be ready for tomorrow's video where you will be able to perform that cloud cost optimization project i hope you enjoyed today's video and you got a lot of information from it 
if you have any feedback do let me know in the comment section and thank you so much for watching the video till the end and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to the channel take care everyone bye see you in the next video